What's going on everybody? I'm Jeremy. You guys are watching Warfels Morse. This week's video is going to be on the signs of ovulation. So hopefully this video really helps you out, especially if it's your first, second season, you know, you're still getting into the, you know, the uh, way things flow and what to look for with everything. Hopefully this video will help you out. Before we get into this video though, make sure you hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell, hit that like button, and of course, as always, leave me a comment down below. Let me know if this video helped you out at all. And also let me know if there's any content you guys would like to see in the near future. I'm always looking for ideas for, you know, what my community wants to see. I greatly appreciate all the feedback, everybody. Uh, it means the world to me. All your support is greatly appreciated. And on top of it, make sure you guys check out the sponsor of this episode. Today's episode is sponsored by GP Snakes. Gershon is a bald python breeder that is working very heavy in the albino clown project along with Enchi. And on top of his amazing animals that he's producing and that he's working with, he also runs a YouTube channel and he runs an awesome, awesome podcast called Under a Thousand Podcast. He gets reptile breeders in and just kind of gets lets everybody get to know these individuals and you know he helps them get some exposure he also has an amazing series called next up which is where he gets breeders that are just starting their break in youtube kind of gets them some exposure helps them get through that uh, that initial grind and helps introduce his subs to these individuals to help the new people get some traction and it's a great thing that he does gershon's a great person can't say enough good things about him. So make sure everybody, you check out all the links for GP Snakes and Gershon down in the description and check him out because he's doing amazing things and blazing the trail. Thank you, Gershon. Thank you, Gershon, for sponsoring this week's episode. Appreciate all your support. It, it means an awful lot to me. And all, make sure everybody, if you're not following Gershon, check out all of the links for his social media. It's in the description down below. Make sure to check out his YouTube channel. He's got a lot of awesome stuff going on there. And on top of it, Instagram, he's always putting out nice stuff there on Instagram and all of his podcasts and different things that he does on his YouTube channel. It's just absolutely great what Gershon does for our community and our hobby. So let's get into this video. All right, so as I said before, this is going to be a video on the signs of ovulation. Now, We've had two ovulations so far this season. One, which you'll see during this video, and she basically shows all the signs of what to look for with an actual ovulation. Now, if you guys remember, a couple videos ago, I did a video on palpating. And our lesser girl, I got to her, and I was kind of like, you know, what's going on here? Because I couldn't really feel the follicles going. You know, when I palpated her, like, they were there, but they weren't there, if you know what I mean. Um, they kind of softened up a little bit, I guess is what I want to say. And that's something that happens when ovulation is starting to take place, I've noticed. Um, it seems like the ball-like form that you're feeling inside there kind of starts to develop more into the egg and it gets a little bit squishier. And it's not as it's not as much of a defined bump, bump, bump. And that's what, ha that's what it was actually going on. We actually called her like, I guess it's like a, the next day is when she went into her full ovulation. And so the palpating video is actually the very start of her ovulation. So that was pretty cool to notice to see and also made videos, you know, the video rolling just back to back. Uh, granted, there's a lot of space here in between the palpating and this video, but that's because I had some other content I wanted to get out there as well. Now we've also had our killer bee female she ovulated as well, but her ovulation is, this is the second time she's done it to me. It, her ovulations are so small. They basically go unnoticed. Like she didn't even have the tail suck. Um, normally there's an also like a little lateral line across their, uh, their side there that you can see where it kind of looks like their, uh, bellies is a lot lower than where the ribs are. It's another sign. The lesser girl didn't experience that, uh, this time around. Maybe she'll do it next time. But this killer bee girl, like, she just swelled up a very, very minuscule amount. I mean, it was a, almost, a, like, I almost missed it, basically. But um, she didn't have any tail suck, which is normally the key sign. But when I go to palpate her now, all the feel of those follicles, poof, gone. So that's basically telling me she did indeed ovulate and that there's now eggs, you know, the follicles are now turning into eggs inside of her. 
So fingers crossed on that clutch because that's our Desert Ghost. Uh, it's gonna be, a, everything's gonna be a head Desert Ghost. So really looking forward to pushing our Desert Ghost projects even further. But without getting into all of that stuff, signs of ovulation. Normally ovulations are really hard to miss because it looks like your snake actually legit so like swallowed a football basically. Um, you have the tail suck, which you'll see in this video where like the belly scales basically, instead of like being flat like this, they kind of start, they kind of like concave in. Um, very, very big sign that an ovulation is taking place. And also, as I mentioned before, you'll notice like sometimes on some where it'll be like a lateral line going across separating from like where the ribs would be. And it's like the belly just drops down a little bit farther below that yet. Another big sign to look for with ovulations. I've noticed I've had two girls last season actually show really good signs of that as well. Um, but yeah, the, ba the big ones that I always look for is the big swelling. It looks like your snake swallowed a football. Really hard to miss that one. And the tail suck. And th those are like the two big key ones to keep an eye out for, in my opinion. Um, also, your snake's going to stop going to the cool end as much, and she's going to go back to the hot end and basically start nesting. She'll push all of the bedding away from a certain spot, kind of clear that whole area out, and she's just going to basically sit there for the most part. You might notice she starts laying on her back, on her side more. Like She's going to start doing all sorts of weird things, and you're going to think, what in the world is wrong with my snake? There's nothing wrong with her. She's just getting ready to give you a clutch of eggs. So, without me rambling on, let's get into this video and show you guys from with my lesser girl what to look for when your snake ovulates so now this is our lesser girl that was paired to the ghi mojave you could see that big swell right in here she's just very very swollen up that's one big tall tail sign of an ovulation let me pull this tub out and show you guys another thing to look for all right, we got the tub out. You can see from here to here, she is like just puffed up. Looks like she's, you know, like basically swallowed a football. So that is the big swell you want to look for when you're dealing with, you know, looking for the signs of an ovulation. So you can definitely tell the difference where, you know, where her body size normally is compared to where it's at now. And then the next big thing is, Look at that tail suck. That there is the second big sign to look for for that ovulation. So you can tell, it's hard to film by yourself, but you can just see like right in here, of course she's not gonna, you can see how her belly scales are kind of sucked in there, they're kinked in. That is the other big sign to look for with an ovulation. Now, I don't know if anybody remembers, but we just filmed an episode not that a couple days ago, actually, of, uh, you know, palpating and feeling for follicles. If you guys remember, I said on how I thought we were catching this girl in her pre, like, right before she would ovulate because I couldn't feel the follicles as pronounced as what they were. And now it's, I think it's, it's actually, like, two days after basically yeah yeah i think it's like two days after and you can now see that she's in full-blown ovulation so one another thing to keep in mind you know if uh from what i noticed with this girl at least this time around you know the closer they get to ovulation you know it gets a little bit fuller and you can't exactly tell the the uh defined follicles as much as you normally can she's so beautiful Super stoked about this clutch. This is she's been paired to our GHI Mojave, so hopefully we get some bells out of this clutch because we missed bells last year, and that's one snake I've wanted to produce from day one. Just think, there's the all white snake with those crystal blue eyes. I mean that they're just stunning. So we'll let this girl go. But those are the big signs of an ovulation again. The big swell here, and then. That tail suck. Two big key factors. And now, instead of being over at the cool end as well, she's been staying over at the hot end. 
she this is all part of the whole transition now she's basically going to stay on that hot end you go through her prelay shed and she'll start nesting you know clearing out all this bedding here making a nice clean spot for her herself to lay the eggs and in about 50 days yeah about 50, roughly about 50 days we should have some eggs dropping super stoked can't wait 2022 season is off to a great start I hope this video helped you guys out. Um, it was this girl ovulated at the perfect timing. Uh, really glad that we're gonna get a clutch of bells hopefully out of her. Hopefully we at least hit a couple. I don't want to be greedy. I think there's like six eggs in there if I remember correctly, or six. She had like six follicles, so hopefully we hit six healthy eggs. I'll be happy if we hit like two bells. I mean, I'm not gonna be greedy. I just want to be able to say I produced some bells. Um, I'll probably hold one back, and the rest will just get sold off. Um, so if you're interested in bells, anything GHI, GHI Mojave stuff, uh, lesser GHI, obviously it's basically all going to go because this clutch is not one that I'm really planning on holding much back except for a few key things. So keep your eyes out for future updates on when this clutch is laid and when they hatch because you might be interested in what's coming out of these eggs, everybody. That's going to wrap up this week's episode. Thank you guys for tuning in. I appreciate all the support. You have no idea how greatly appreciative I am. The moment of making this, um, or I should say, because I did this in two parts. I was really hoping to catch the killer bee girl and her ovulation. So you could have two examples of, you know, ovulations going on. But sadly, she just didn't, her signs really weren't there. Um, I'll actually include a link up in this corner. It should be maybe this corner, one of these corners. Um, to my previous ovulation video from last year, and I'll at least give you another female to look at and judge with uh, signs and everything. That should be our pewter leopard girl from last season when she went. Um, hopefully this video helped out. Like I said, I greatly appreciate all the support. Make sure you guys check out the sponsor of this episode, Gershana GP Snakes. Thank you, brother, for sponsoring this episode. It means the world to me. And we'll catch you next time, everybody. Later.